I'm Amber from Amber's Craft Week blog. If you saw my recent Hot Topic haul video, you may recall that there are a few items that I liked but I was not happy with the fit on. So we're going to go ahead and modify some of these and see if we can make them fit better. First up we have this Nightmare on Elm Street tank top. I love the pattern on this, but the problem is there's just way too much fabric at the sides for me. Now the nice thing about modifying oversized tanks and tees is that as long as you don't want it perfectly fitted, there are some quick and easy methods you can use. So we're going to do kind of the quick and easy method. To do this, you're going to need a top that has your desired fit already. You probably don't want it to be any stretchier than the garment you're working with. I have this cami here that I'm going to be using. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn this inside out. And we're going to do the same thing with the top we're going to modify. And so we're just going to lay the top we want to modify down on the floor. And we're going to put the top that we're using to modify it on top of it. Here we have our oversized top lying flat on the floor. And we're just going to take our cami, and we're going to line it up on top of it. And the purpose of this is to figure out how much we have to take the top in by. So our next step is going to be to take a metallic marker and just kind of draw where we want to cut. So we want to leave some seam allowance, which is basically extra space you have at the edges. So I'm going to leave probably about half an inch or so seam allowance for now. And if you haven't done this before, it's probably better to leave more of an allowance than less. Because if you cut off too little fabric, you can always go in and cut more later. But if you cut off too much, you can't really fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and pin along the marker lines. Now I personally don't like to make any cuts to my garment until I am sure that everything is fitted and working out nicely. So what I do is before I would cut along the seam line, I'm going to put some pins in place, kind of mark out where I'm planning on sewing. And it's a good thing that I didn't make any cuts because it turns out that I did not budget enough space for my hips. If you'll recall, the cami I was working from was not as long as this top, so I had to kind of guesstimate. And I was not right for the hips, so I had to move my safety pins out farther to budget for my uh, very present hips. From here, you could trim this down a little bit. I tend to like to wait until the very end to trim the seams, but you could cut them at this point in time once you're short fit. So I'm going to take out my sewing machine. I'm going to sew along the line that I've made with the safety pins. I may even do some little markings. That's probably what I'm going to do next. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some little markings where the safety pins are so I kind of have a sense of where at what lines to follow, but this is completely optional. Unfortunately, I don't have a good space for sewing. I just kind of plop my sewing machine down wherever and sew. So I'm not going to be able to show you the sewing process, but once I'm done, I will show you the stitches I made and explain what I did. All right, so I went ahead and sewed the shirt. Originally, I was planning on doing a zigzag stitch, but I forgot to switch the mode on my sewing machine over, so I ended up doing a straight stitch. I don't know if you, you probably can see it best on the red areas, but there's the stitch. And I just, you know, stitched along the side, along the, where I had those safety pins. And so all we have left to do is cut off the excess fabric. You do want to be careful with the stitching if your garment is likely to fray. This kind of t-shirt fabric is less likely to fray, so I think having a straight stitch here is probably going to end up being fine. So I'm just going to trim off some of this extra fabric, and then I'll try it on for you. So here is the shirt, and I think these are the same bottoms I was wearing in the haul video, so just to kind of give you a very similar perspective. As you can see, this is much more fitted now. It comes in very nicely. I think it's a very flattering cut now. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. I think it worked out really nicely. It was a relatively simple fix. Next up, we have the Nightmare on Elm Street suspender skirt, and this is going to be the biggest challenge to fix. Now, if this was a normal circle skirt, it would be relatively easy to do. All I have to do is take off the waistband and then bring the waistband in by the amount I needed it to and also bring in the garment itself by the amount I needed it to and sew it all back together. What makes this so tricky is that there are several key features that need to stay in their current locations. So there are two pockets, 
one on either side of the uh, romper and they need to stay at the sides. There also is a zipper in the back and that needs to stay at the center back. That makes taking this in a little bit tricky. What I ended up designing to do for this was to add darts. So for those of you who aren't familiar with darts, they're basically little tucks in the fabric, little triangle shapes, and I will, I've will i already pinned this, so I apologize for going ahead. I just wanted to make sure I could do it. And then these darts were really nice, so I didn't want to undo them. But basically, they're just places where you taper the fabric in. So you figure out how much you want to taper the fabric by, and you would usually you'd draw a line. I just kind of was eyeballing it using the safety pins, and I just kind of made a line. So you start out at some thicker distance, and you taper down. And that's the way you can bring in your garment. So I decided to go with darts. Originally I wanted to take off the waistband. I didn't want to put darts into that, but the zipper in the back seems like it's really well sewn in there. And I haven't worked with zippers before, so I didn't want to mess with taking out this really nice zipper and then trying to re-put it back in. So I'm just tapering the whole thing. So what I did was, my first step was figure out how big the waistband was. And I just laid it flat on the ground and then measured straight across. That measurement was 15 and a half inches. And so since it's lying flat, you can double it to get an estimate of the waist measurement. So 15 and a half times two would be 31. So it was about 31 inches currently. Now since my waist is 24 inches, roughly, I knew I'd have to take it in by the difference between that. So you take the 31, the bigger measurement, you subtract your actual waist measurement, so 24. I need it, need it taken in by about seven inches. And those are just very rough measurements. They're not perfect or exact. I realized I was going to need to make four symmetrical darts. Uh, now you could do darts in the front or darts in the back generally, but with these pockets, to keep them from getting shifted into the front of the garment or to the back of the garment, you need to be changing the front and the back by the same amount. So I figured the easiest way to do this would be to do four darts symmetrically, so two in the front and two in the back. And I made each of them two inches, so taking in two inches of fabric at each dart. So what I did was I turned the fabric inside out. And I used my little measuring tape and I measured out an inch and I put a pin in there and then I just kind of tapered it by eye. So I just put a bunch of pins and tapered it down. To, to do this more precisely, what you would want to do is figure out how long you want your dart to be. So maybe you want it to be four inches or six inches. You would mark your one inch mark here. You would mark where you want your dart to end and you just draw a straight line connecting them using a fabric marker or a metallic marker or something like that. And then you just pin along that line you drew. So that would be a more precise way of doing it. I'm doing kind of an eyeballing method, which we'll see how that goes. And so I just made sure to make them symmetric. So I went the same amount over from the suspenders on this side, roughly as I did on this side. And then in the back, I did kind of the same thing. Now that the darts are all pinned, it's time for some sewing. I already went ahead and sewed one dart as a test, so this one right here, I went ahead and tried sewing. It didn't come out perfectly straight, unfortunately, so I went a little fast in places unintentionally. I'm still trying to figure out how to navigate my machine, but hopefully the other darts will come out nicely and we'll have a nicely fitting garment at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the rest of the darts and then we're going to try this on. Okay, so now I have the darts sewn. And honestly, that could have gone a little bit better. They're not terrible, but you can see there are like issues with the fabric. So my sewing machine really was not pleased with this fabric, especially this uh, along the waistband. This is really thick fabric here. I have a heavy duty sewing machine. I have the Singer Cosplay sewing machine. So it's a pretty heavy duty machine, but even as such, it did not like this fabric very much. So some of the darts like this one, this one's relatively okay. It's really not too bad, but others are just kind of a bit of a wreck. So not my finest work, but let's try this on and see how it looks on me. So here is what the finished suspender skirt looks like. I've paired it with the same top and shoes and everything as earlier so you can have a better comparison with the previous outfit. So the darts, you have one right here and one right here. Honestly, I don't know if they're super noticeable. And then if we turn around, there are also two in the back. 
So there's one here, and then somewhere on the other side of the skirt, there's another one. I can't immediately feel it. Oh, if that one's a little bit over here. So somehow that one gets shifted over, but that's not a big deal. So that's what it looks like. As you can see, it fits much more nicely around my waist. I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can get a better view of it. The band now sits very snugly around my waist. These straps still need some adjusting, but that's not a big deal. They're adjustable. But yeah, so let's look at the pockets at the side. So absolutely love these pockets. Although it was a bit of trouble to do, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend trying this yourself unless you absolutely must have this, which if you must, I can understand because it's pretty cool. But yeah, so this is what it looks like. Next up, we have this Harley Quinn choker. Now, if you've seen this haul video, you probably saw that the choker did not actually work as a choker on me. The neckband was quite a bit too big, so it did not lie flat against my neck like a choker is supposed to. However, this should be a relatively straightforward fix. What we'll need for this are some scissors and two sets of pliers. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the choker down to size. There's quite a bit of chain here, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut the choker right here. It's going to be too small for my neck, but that's okay because the chain will allow us to have extra length. So I'm just going to cut a chunk off like that. Now the trickiest part is going to be peeling this clamp up because we need to take this clamp and move it to our new end. So I'm just going to take these pliers and slowly start opening up on either end. And if you have any spare ones on hand, like if you make jewelry in your free time, you're probably best off just going with a new one. I don't happen to have any extras on hand, so I really need this one. And we're just going to stretch this open a little bit more, nice and wide. And then we're just going to sandwich the end right in and close the pliers onto it. And so now all we have to do is clasp this down with our pliers. Make sure it's nice and secure. So now we've shortened our choker. It should be much more appropriate for my neck. All right, so now we've got our choker on. And as you can see, it now lies against my neck pretty well. It fits like a choker is supposed to. And so that should be another relatively easy fix. So if you have some pliers on hand and some scissors, since this is just foam, all you have to do is cut off a little bit of excess and take it in a bit and you now have a fitted choker. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a like or let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more of this content, please let me know. I do some clothing modifications every now and again, so I'll be happy to show you more when I do them. Thanks for watching and have a great day.